ever since the city announced it was paying more than $8 million to bring a Jeff Koontz piece to Sacramento, people can't stop talking about it, but not all of it's good. To move the discussion forward, I've invited two Sacramento artists to discuss the work. With me is Merle Axelrod, a Sacramento artist who happens to have one of her pieces in Sacramento City Hall, and Lyle Jones, Executive Director of the Crocker Art Museum and a pivotal member of the Selection Committee. How did we arrive at this proposal to bring a Coons piece to Sacramento? Sacramento has an Art in Public Places program where um, building projects are required that have public funding associated with them are required to put a certain percentage of the building costs into public art. And there was a decision that there should be a key piece that is um, headquarter cited in the plaza, the main public plaza, that would become iconic for Sacramento. So we talked about doing an open selection process, uh, actually an invitational process, where curators from out the state of California identify artists of international stature that could submit. When we started really drilling down into the timeline, we realized that that really wasn't feasible to have this piece installed in time for the arena to open in 2016. So we decided instead to go to a direct selection process. When the Coons piece um, all of a sudden came forward, not at the same meeting, but at the next meeting as we're starting to put together lists, um, as a potential. Uh, it is uh, 18 feet tall, 9 feet wide, very slim, less than a foot deep. So but I think what sold everybody was the reflective nature of the surface. The surface is fabulous. It is a piece that changes um, all day long, every day. It changes as people approach it, walk near it. It changes as the sky changes, uh, as the weather um, changes. If you love art, you understand it. And if you don't love art, you also understand it because of its rather commercial nature. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the, the selection process and how, how we got here? I understand that the Arts Commission has the option to do a direct purchase. So this is actually being purchased not through the artist, but through the gallery. So the gallery is getting about 50% of this, which I think is something worth noting. As far as the piece itself being reflective and all of that, I think that's a wonderful quality for art. And if it were installed in the Crocker Museum, I would be 100% for it. But I question whether this is a good investment for the city of Sacramento, because if exposed to the elements and not properly maintained, or if it's touched by too many people. It will lose its luster, it will have a matte finish, it will decompose. There's $1.5 million of money that is specifically earmarked to, to artists in the Sacramento region that's going into the uh, arena. That's, a, the, as I understand it, the most significant pot of money specifically for artists of this region ever in the history of the SMAC program. So I do know that one of the things that was added in this is uh, a special surface so that it um, does have a greater longevity without major conservation. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's pri pri proprietary or not, it, it, um, uh, and I think Merle's probably read more about this than well, I have, honestly. The, 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 all the statements about the finish that I was saying, I got from the 53-page report that was prepared for city council members. Okay. And I hope they read it. One of the other criticisms we've heard a lot is that uh, this should have gone to, to local artists or that the, the bulk of the money should have gone to local artists. How do you, how do you, do you agree with that position? And Okay, I'm going to probably get a lot of local artists angry with me, but I think it's ridiculous to say that all of the art at the arena should go to a local artist or local artists. Um, if we did that, every other city would have the right to do that. If every city did that, limited who could be in the competition, it would basically doom Sacramento artists to showing only in Sacramento. So I think that that is not a good argument. However, I do think that the discussion of whether it was a selected piece versus an open call to artists is worth discussing. And I understand there's a time constraint. As far as I know, um, and my knowledge is limited, but as far as I know, there's never been any kind of private donations to public art uh, of this nature in the history of the APP program in Sacramento. So I think this is very much something to be celebrated, uh, that individuals have stepped up and are being very, very generous to this project. 
artists need to look at the work of other artists. And if you ever restrict um, what someone can see to a certain uh, geographic area or a certain genre, you're doing a disservice to the arts community broadly. Artists are informed by the work of other artists. That is, mm -hmm. you know, it's historical practice, um, and it will be, I'm sure, practice for generations and generations to come. Um, I, I think the thought that um, the only work that should go in Sacramento is work by Sacramento artists, as good as many of them are, is short-sighted. So this was going to be um, a, a select group of artists were going to be select were going to be picked for invitation. Um, I don't think that there was any restriction on the geographic location of the artists that were invited. Mm -hmm. um, what was um, intended, however, is the work be of international stature, regardless of where the artist is from. Mm -hmm. They could be from Land Park, they could be from London, um, they could be from anywhere. Do you think in, in years to come that, that the, the positions will soften and, and people will, will warm to this thing, to Piglet? Yes, I absolutely do. I think it will become an iconic piece that Sacramentans will love. I know people oppose the Indo Arch, and now it's part of the fabric of the city. I mean, the Indo Arch is an entryway, and it forms an entryway. This particular piece, I don't mean to say this, it, you know, there's a term, plop art. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It means that you take this art and plop it down, rather than developing it for that space. And I think that's where this piece, whether you like it or not, really falls short. Because I don't think it has anything to do with that space or with the use of the space. And to put something there that people are not allowed to touch or get too close to, I question it as an investment for the city. Okay. So bringing up the issue of price, I know a lot of people are complaining it's $8 million. Think of what you could get for $8 million. I don't like the idea of putting value on a piece of art because of what other people have paid for it. The question in my mind is, will people travel to see this? Will this become a destination This for is not the bean in Chicago. I mean, if it were, I would bring me that bean. That's my favorite piece of public art ever. Generally, the price of a work has very little to do with the value of the work. It has to do with the market in which the work is, is traded. And I guess my point is, I would like art in our city to be purchased, commissioned, because it's really good art. Not because it's a made by an artist who has one of the best marketing machines on the planet. I think the work is fabulous. I think that it's a, a, you know, if you want work that is a product of the society in which it is produced, which is generally what um, work does reflect um, that society, I think this piece does that well. I think it is a piece that will stand the test of time. I, I do believe that um, one of the things that public art is meant to do is get people to converse. And I think if nothing else, this piece has already shown its success in getting people to have um, dialogues and also just um, um, general discourse. Jeff Koons has been sued four times for copyright in the past. He's lost three times. And my understanding, and I could be wrong, so I would like the city's legal staff to look at this, is that Jeff Koons is indemnified for any repercussions if he loses a lawsuit for using Piglet. And my question is, does that mean the city is liable? The source material um, that inspired this particular piece is a color book image of Piglet. This piece is not that image. It's open right. to interpretation. We will leave it there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay.